Okay, so we are doing some fine art photography here today, and I love doing anything that is personal and uncomfortable, and we're going to definitely do those things today. So what we're doing specifically, you can see that we've got an extremely messy stage here. I don't know if you notice that there are white footprints all over the place. This is because I made a mess yesterday as well, and we decided we just wouldn't clean it because what's the point if I'm going to be standing here again? So what we're doing today is five different photo shoots in a very short period of time. So we're going to go from the idea to shooting them to even editing one from start to finish, and that's what we're going to do in the next 45 minutes or so. We've got a kiddie pool up here, as you can see, and we've already got some dry ice sitting in here because we're going to create this smoky fog effect inside the pool. And I'm really, really excited to play with the dry ice. It is so much fun. We've also got baby powder, which is why the stage is completely messy. And in my opinion, baby powder is one of the best ways of creating a fog effect, like a smoky effect, but really, really inexpensive. So we've got baby powder for that. I've got some fabric that we're going to fling around on stage and create this flowing fabric effect that we can put together in Photoshop. And finally, I have this saran wrap which I'm gonna show you just how creepy I am in just a second here, but we're going to be playing with saran wrap as well. So like I said, we're going to do five different photo shoots and I'm going to put them together in editing as well. So we're gonna go start to finish on an image right now. But first I wanna show you a little bit of what I do and a little bit of my background and I wanna show you how I put my images together. So this is an example of one of my images. And this is an image that was taken 100% by myself for about $2, I would say. I went to a fabric store. I got whatever fabric was there that was see-through and beautiful. And it was just the leftover on the bolt. So it was $2, super, super easy. I took it out to the forest at sunrise. And I did my thing, which is the very awkward process of jumping around and flinging fabric and hoping by the end of it that I have what I need to put an image together. This was a very interesting photo shoot because not only am I by myself, but I have to be the model as well. So my process is one where I have my camera set up on a tripod, I have a remote, I'll stand in front of my camera, and then I have about two seconds from the time that I click my remote to the time that I have to pose. Does anyone do self-portraits? A couple of you guys hesitantly raised your hands. So listen, self-portraiture is really fun because it allows you to do whatever you want in the frame. You don't have to do whatever anybody else wants. You don't owe anyone anything. But this isn't about self-portraiture. It's about fine art. So any fine artists in the crowd? OK. Now, fine art, for our purposes right now, is simply defined as personal work. It is something that you do for yourself because you want to do it, first and foremost. So when I say fine art ideas that we're working in the fine art genre, it doesn't have to look any particular way. It can be landscape. It can be macro. It can be weird stuff like you're going to see here. But at the bottom line is this idea that the concept is more important, that what you want to create is more important than what anybody else wants from you. So let's take a look at how these images are put together from start to finish. I'll show you the before image here. Now, you'll notice that I'm missing an arm. Don't mind that. I obviously am not actually missing an arm. It's just my weird editing process that I'll take you through in just about 30 minutes or so. And this was how the image started. So I was, now what you don't see is that in that arm that's missing, I was holding my remote. So I just erased it right out of there right to start. But what I was doing was I had my camera in front and I would click and then I would go like that and pose really, really fast. And that's what I ended up with is this image. So I'll take you through the editing process. I start to darken the image, start to give it some different lighting, and later on, we're going to go through the process of how do you change an image fundamentally in Photoshop? How do you go from an image being flat 
to having dynamic lighting and interesting colors to give it your own signature. So you'll start to see the fabric come on here. And these were, again, just individual shots of the fabric like this being flung into the air and then photographing them as that happens. So I have the fabric, and more and more pieces are going to get added on. And this is really where the true artist comes out in a person. It's based on stuff like this. How do you compose that image when I could have put these pieces of fabric anywhere in that picture? And that's what's so exciting about creating personal work, is that it can be whatever you want it to be. So this is how I decided to put this image together, the shape that I decided to create, the colors, the lighting that I decided were right for me, until I get to this very, very almost final stage. There we go. And that was the finished product of this shoot. Now I'm going to show you another image, which is extremely creepy. And it's this one. And this one is one that people sometimes really like, or they really, really, really hate it. So does anybody really hate this picture? You can be totally honest with me. It's OK. You guys are just very nice. Thank you. But I don't believe that all of you do not hate this picture. This is an interesting image because it could have been done in so many different ways. And I'm curious as to how you would have done it. So does anybody have an idea, if you were going to make this picture, how you would have put it together? Does anyone have just like an inkling of, if I told you, you have five minutes to try to put this together, and I'll give you a million dollars if you do it in five minutes. What would you immediately start doing? Someone tell me. We're a family here. Good. Find the model. <laughs> That's a good first start. Now, how would you create this effect? Hmm? Fabric. Exactly. So I'll take you through and show you the behind the scenes of how I ended up doing this picture. And you can keep thinking about how you would do it. A million dollars is on the table, you guys, so you better start thinking. So I've got this image of myself sitting in bed with just a black sheet taped in the background. And I usually go through a process of expanding my frame out. So instead of getting back further and photographing a wider scene, I'll get in closer and I'll photograph my subject and then take extra pictures all around to expand my frame outward. And this lets me print larger, which is really nice for fine artwork if you're selling through galleries and things like that. So I've expanded my frame outward with my extra pictures. And then I've got my zipper on my back. And now it doesn't look right. I, I recognize this is a beginning stage. And I'm going to go through a process of shading and coloring and lighting to try to blend this in to make it believable. Because here's the thing with surrealism, is that if it's not based in reality, if you don't fundamentally believe it based on what your experience of life is, then the surrealism doesn't matter at all. It's just going to be unbelievable. So I'm adding the shading, sort of smoothing out the skin and the fabric. And then we're going to hopefully get to a place here where it's believable. So then how was this created? And it's really, really simple. I have this dress. It's a beautiful dress. It looks like the same color as my skin tone. I took a pillow. I put a black pillowcase on it. I stuffed the pillowcase down into the dress. And this is what it looked like with the pillowcase stuffed inside, which was very interesting because it has oddly the same shape as my body. I've come to learn that my body is now likened to a pillow. And that's OK with me, because it looks good in this photo. It matched my shape of my body really well. And I was able to use this image to create this effect. Now, finally, I wanted to show you one last image behind the scenes of how it was created. Because like I said, we're creating inexpensively today. And that's how I create 95% of the time. My budget for an average photo shoot is about $5, I would say. No more than that. Part of that was necessity. I was very, very poor when I started taking photos. I lived in a very small one-room apartment. I w didn't have any budget to do anything. So I would go out to dumpsters, for example, and go dumpster diving. Any dumpster divers out here? OK, a hesitant hand. I get it. You don't have to admit it. It's really fun. It's, I mean, also a little bit dangerous and smelly and don't get a disease. But you can find some amazing things that people throw away. So why not? 
And that's what I do for a lot of my images. So I've found dresses in dumpsters, pieces of fabric. I've found props that are amazing. I found a candle in a dumpster that I used once. So many things. So I go out and I find cheap, cheap things that we can use to make our images impactful. And this was how this image started. Now, I don't have a studio. I do not have an assistant. I do not have anybody helping me, any space to go to create. So I shot this in my garage. I shot this just, I opened my garage door. I hung a, a bed sheet up that was black. I was able to use that as my backdrop. And this was what happened. I draped myself in fabric. I used cheap twine, just like little rope, to create a shape on my body. And then this is how I started. I started to expand my frame outward by photographing that fabric in multiple different positions, as you can see here, popping on, to create a more dynamic shape. These are my little candles. And I'm starting to pay attention to what's going to make this image stand out. What color red is the exact color red for our story that we're creating? And so I'm changing those things, changing the light, changing the contrast, changing the texture, changing how you see this image fundamentally until we get to the end. And that's what we're going to do right now. So if you weren't here at the beginning, we're about to do a photo shoot with dry ice, baby powder, red fabric, saran wrap, and one more thing that I didn't mention yet. So I want you guys to start thinking right now about a prop, like any object that you see around you that you happen to have with you that we could bring up on stage and create with. Because I want to make the point that we can create with anything, anything. And we can try to shape that to match our vision. Are you looking for a prop? I hear rustling of bags. Is that a prop? Oh. That was a lot less exciting than I had hoped for. But last resort, we're, we're going to use your fruit. No, you can eat your fruit. I'm not going to take your fruit. So start thinking about an object that you have with you, that you see around you, that we can use in a photo shoot. What do you have? Awesome. OK, I'm going to get back to you in a second. We'll see if anything better comes along. No offense, I like your scarf. OK, so let's get started shooting then, shall we? All right, so I'm going to bring my model on stage. Would you come on out? Say your name again. Duan. Duan. She is going to do a whole bunch of odd things for us here. And we're going to see how that goes. Now, I do not use lights. I do not use any assistance. I literally do not know how to turn a light on. I am not exaggerating. I had one very scary experience in London in a fancy studio with an opera singer. And they sent lights to the studio for me to use. And I was like, what do I do? And actually, the caterer ended up helping me use the lights throughout the day because I couldn't figure it out to save my life. So what are we using is natural light. We've got natural light coming in from outside. We've got some lights up here that maybe could be a good kicker. And we'll see how it goes. I always use practical lighting, so whatever's around me. And we're going to use Photoshop later to see how we can transform that. All right, so let's test the light. We're going to see where we're going to start here. And I'm just going to go around first with my hand and see what looks good. I think this will be a fine place. So why don't I have you just stand right there? Watch out for the dry ice. <laughs> and I'm going to start shooting. Maybe we'll just do a test shot real quick. And I noticed that we have this light down here on her skirt. I'm OK with that, because I'm going to start shooting just maybe the top portion of her. We're not going to get the whole body yet. So I'm shooting with my a7R2. I've got a 25 millimeter lens on just for ease right now, since we're going to do a lot of different setups all at once. And I'm going to get in, and I'm watching my own shadow. Can you see me like totally in the way here? So I'm gonna, just going to go like this. Could you take a little step that way? Oh, and a little step back. Can you take a little more step back and not fall out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you go this way again? OK, there we go. I think that's a good happy medium right there. And I'm just going to take my first test shot, just to make sure that everything is going to go really well. OK. Now, once that pops up, we're going to start our official shoot. And I'm going to start with my red fabric. So we've got red fabric here. And we're going to start to play with this, OK? So like, 
how dynamic of an image can we make this in a really short period of time? So the first thing that I want to do is get a pose down. So I'm going to have you, you know what? Would you step out of the pool for a second? We're just going to fix this light situation and just go like that. Now you can step back in the pool. OK. <laughs> I like quick fixes. That's so much better. All right, so I'm going to photograph her first. And I'm not going to do that with the red fabric yet at all. We're going to worry about this separately, because the way that I work is to build one image on top of another. I make sure that I have my main shot of my subject, and then I start to worry about all these extra elements. So what I'm going to have you do is face out toward the audience. Great. And you can take a little step forward. Yep, there you go. Perfect. And then I'm going to have you with your arms down at your sides, and I'll just have you go like that and just sort of puff your chest up as much as possible. Good. OK. Oh, that's not my camera. That's my fabric. OK. So I'm going to get in here. I'm going to photograph you just like that. Now, if you could push your pelvis out forward, it's yeah, yep, that's great. Super weird direction, but we're going to go with that. And then can you take your arms back just slightly? Yep, there you go. Perfect. Now, I've got a dark backdrop, which is perfect for what we're doing right now. I'm just getting my focus. Great. OK. Now we have a single image that we could possibly use. Now this is not impressive yet, I know. It's just a picture of a girl standing there. So what can we do to change this to make it even better? Now I would argue that because of this light, we kind of are limited over here with how many shadows there are. So let's take you to the other side. And this is just a matter of playing with what looks good. So I'm just going to have you stand right there. Now the light is more natural coming in. There are no shadows. I can get her whole body in this picture. So I'm going to have you model head to toe this time, which means that if you can do it, I'm going to have you go on your tiptoes. Oh, you did it without even me saying it. That was so great. We're like twins. And then I'll just have you go like that, OK? And I'm going to get the whole body this time, like I mentioned. And don't, don't bother going on your tiptoes if you're going to fall over yet, OK? All right. Now I'm not worried about the background unless as long as, I should say, there's enough darkness back there, and there is. So go ahead and assume your position. Great. No, you got it. I got it. We got it. We all got it. OK. So we've got this image, which I actually really like to start. Now, if I were doing this for real, I would poof the skirt out and stuff like that. But we, we have to do five photo shoots in like 10 minutes here, so we're going to go really fast. So I've got my main shot, OK? Now, the only problem is that it's not complete. Her beautiful face is in this photo, but it's not going to be in the end. So we have to cover it up with some fabric. Now that I've got the main shot of her body exactly how I want it, now I'm going to play with this fabric. And what I want you to do, this is weird. I just met her this morning, and I told her that I'm going to wrap her in saran wrap, but I'll do this first, because this is way nicer to start when you just meet somebody. So I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to put this on your head, if you're OK with that. Yes. OK, so we'll start like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go like that. OK, totally normal. <laughs> Great. OK, now, could I get a fabric floofer? Yeah. Oh, you can pull it. Go ahead, just yank it. There you go. You're good. Oh, <laughs> We're professionals. We're, it's fine. OK. And in fact, you can hold this there if you would like. Just hold it down. Now, if you could come right behind. Oh, sorry. I'm not making that very easy for you. Um, and you'll just take all this fabric, and you'll take a good step forward. There you go. And I'm just going to have you toss it up in the air just like that. You're, yes, perfect. She's a natural. OK. Now, my job is to get a similar angle that I had before. I was down here. And I'm going to catch this motion. But I need to change my settings to do that, because I'm at 1 30th of a second. That's not going to look very good at all, is it? So I'm going to go ahead and just change my ISO. I'm going up to 800 so that I can change my shutter speed to be about 200. And that's going to be a lot better. And I'm going to just take a few shots. OK. Now, the only thing that isn't working yet is the way that the fabric is falling down below. I actually want this to sort of wrap around her head like that and go up, if you can see that, as I look like I'm choking you. OK, so we're going to reposition. There you go. And I'll have you grab that. That's going to look a lot better. 
and we'll just really toss it up. And I guess we're going to take two more shots. That's perfect. Yes. I'm just going to refocus. And you know what? You can actually throw it all up and let it go, and we'll try that. Ready? Whenever you're ready. We got it. OK, now one more for safety. I, got, I said I got two shots. So I'm going to take my two shots. Uh-huh. Even better. Thank you. That was very helpful. I appreciate you very much. OK, so we've got the fabric. Now, another idea here that we're not going to photograph right now is these roses. Photographing the roses in different positions. Wouldn't it be really beautiful if we photographed the roses and then had the fabric turning into roses as it moved out behind her? Just another interesting idea to add layers of depth to this image. OK, so that was shoot number one. Now, we're going to saran wrap you. Would you mind stepping back into the pool? OK, anyone want to help with the saran wrap? Yeah. I, I love the enthusiasm of your hand going up. Like, saran wrap, yeah, I want to wrap somebody in saran wrap. Who wouldn't want to do that? Now, the idea with the saran wrap, let me just say before we start, is not to just be creepy or just for shock value, OK? Because a lot of the stuff that I do can be mistaken for just trying to get a, a reaction from people. And what I want to clarify is that something such as this, saran wrap, which will have an extremely claustrophobic and suffocating feeling to it, automatically evokes an emotion from you. So when I start to wrap her, I want you to start to think about how you feel when you watch that happening. If you feel claustrophobic as well, hopefully you do not feel that way. So if I could have you hold that, and I'm going to unroll it with you around her. So let's step over here and make sure you don't touch the dry ice. And we're going to have you pose. I'm going to have her pose just like this so that she's covering her face. And it's very, very sticky. OK. Great. Now, I'm going to have you walk this way. Perfect. OK, once we get that stuck, that should be good. And I'll take this one from here. Thank you. OK. I've been saran wrapped three times in my life. And it was all horrible. So I feel a little bit bad. But also, life is for experiences. So we're just going to embrace it. Now, could you go up higher with it? Yep. We're going to do this like passing it off. There's no easy way to saran wrap somebody, you guys. In case you're like, oh, I need to do this at home, just make sure that you have a lot of time. It's going to be great. Ugh. How are you doing? I'm OK. OK, she's OK. I'll get it from here. I think we're good. Thank you so much. I'm undoing it, don't worry. Whew. That is some saran wrap. That's like heavy duty industrial strength. Now I'm going to try to pull this up slightly. And then if you could actually take it with your fingers and just like push your fingers apart so that you're like stretching it. Yep, exactly. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to photograph this as a close-up shot. And I'm just going to get in and really focus in on the emotion of the face. But I want the face to be distorted slightly. So I'm actually going to have you turn toward me a little. And I'm just going to have you put your head down. Perfect. And then lean your upper body in toward me. Good. OK. Oh, this looks way creepier than I thought it was going to, for whatever reason. Could you turn just slightly toward me? Perfect. OK. And so this is our final image. Now, I would do a lot to this image. So it wouldn't just be finished as it is. But it's really, really interesting just to notice what emotions does something as simple as saran wrap bring up for you? So who felt uncomfortable watching? Like, like I don't want to be wrapped in saran Do you want to be wrapped in saran wrap? No. It's super uncomfortable. and. At the end of the day, something like this, and you can relax. <laughs> something 
like this is a universal symbol. It's a universal symbol. I'm going to try to help you. Because almost anybody in the world could see this and understand the emotion that it's bringing up. This would be so much easier with scissors, huh? We could just cut you out of it. Oh my God. Okay, great. Oh, how nice. Okay, now we've got three more shoots, okay? Woo! I need some baby powder poofers. Who wants to be baby powder poofers? One, two, one, two, that'll be great. You're gonna get baby powdered. It will be messy. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna have you guys, you can come right up here and stand there. And you can come around to this side and stand there. And I'm gonna have you take a little step back and a little step over. Perfect. There's your baby powder. I think it's close, yours might be open. Now yours is open. Have you guys ever professionally poofed baby powder before? Well, you have something new to add to your resume. This will be great. Okay, take a little step forward for me, sorry. Oh, perfect. Now you could take a step back into that corner, into the dark dungeon. And what I'm going to have you guys do is sort of aim like at each other, just like crossing, and you're gonna poof, 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 and just spray that baby powder behind her. Behind, not on her. Not yet. Not on her yet, we're saying. And let's see how this goes, okay? Now I'm gonna get my settings before we do anything else. And I'm just gonna get in sort of like this. And now what I would like you to do is you're gonna look out that way up toward there and I want you to sort of hold this pose of like you're walking out of the mist. Okay. And you guys are the mist. Okay, now I'm, I'm almost in position. Okay, I'm ready. Now I'm just going to keep clicking and you guys are going to keep powdering. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. That's right, you'll get into it. Okay, very good. Woo! You guys are very clean. I feel like we did something wrong because they are so clean. But do you see in these images how it looks like there's this mist effect behind her, like it's fog? And it costs just a few dollars to do this, which I think is super exciting. And the great thing is that anybody can do this. Now, I can't do this by myself, right? because I can't poof my own baby powder and be in the picture, but almost anybody can do this. My husband refuses to help because he thinks that messes are like the devil. We're very opposite people, but still, it doesn't take that much effort. So I think we got some good images to play with here. Thank you guys for being baby powder poofers. I very much appreciate it. And the last thing that we're going to do here is get a whole bunch of dry ice in this space. So what I'm going to have you do is lay down, and we're going to get you in fetal position on your side. And you know what? I think if we did get the, the, the tray in, that would be great. But if, if that's not a good idea, we won't do it. <laughs> and I'm going to have you lay on your side and just curl up in as little of a ball as you can. Perfect. She makes a very nice little ball, which is really good. Now I'm going to get my camera all set as the ice starts to come out. And I'm actually tilting my screen. Now we've got some highlights and shadows here, partially caused by me. So I'm just gonna show you, oh, I'm actually doing a good job of blocking some of the light here. I'm gonna show you what we're looking at. I've tilted my screen so that I can get my focus perfect. And so I'm just showing you a little bit of what's going on here. Ooh, this is looking nice, huh? Amy, we finally did it. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be great. Sorry, don't breathe. <laughs> All good. Okay. Now I'm just going to keep getting different angles. And you can see that we've got this really severe highlight, which had I been smarter, I would have probably moved the pool earlier. But I didn't. So I'm using my own shadow to block that a little bit. Yeah, right over there would be perfect. Thank you. Hey, does somebody want to get up here and assist in like, like real fast? Yeah. 
would you hold that piece of fabric up behind me? And we're just going to block this light as much as we can. And we're going to make this awesome. And if you can't breathe, you sit up, okay? okay. That's the deal. <laughs> that's, right yep, now. no, that's really good. <laughs> and then just right behind me, like right through here. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and make this a little bit brighter and see what we can do. Now, this is looking very interesting to me. We've got a lot going on here and a lot of smoke effect. And I, this is so cool. If you guys need to get up and look, feel free. You're not stuck to your seats. It doesn't matter. She's, she's just getting air because this is a very, very terrible thing to make somebody do in, in reality. Great. Now, okay, so you can get up, because I know that this is extremely difficult, okay? So go ahead and just sit there, and I'll just take one more shot of you sitting. So if you just want to sort of look out that way, I'll just get one more shot like that, just for some variety. Okay. So now, thank you so much. You've been the best assistant ever. <laughs> you can just drop it. If you want to get up out of there, feel free. It's... OK, good. Then you sit in the smoke. So what I'm doing here is I'm ignoring some key things. Some of those key things are the tub in the background, because I know that I can get rid of it later. And this is all a matter of your personal preference. Now, if we had infinite time up here and lots of dry ice, then what I would end up doing is using all really smart materials to put that ice in like lots and lots of black tubs to put the ice in so that it blended right in. But we didn't have that here, so we're using what we have. And that's why this white tub is in there, because of that. Now, what can I do to this image later to make this more impactful? One of the things that I can do is actually expand this frame out and add more smoke fog effect to the outside so then it gets bigger and bigger. And it's like she's in a body of water, for example. Another thing that I could do is to actually take this image and just fade it to black as it goes out. So there's a natural transition from the smoke effect to the black effect. Does anyone have that object? So who has a good object that we can use? Uh, but not scrappy again. But that was amazing. Oh, an umbrella. I'm sorry. The scarf has been usurped. I'm d this, is, this is what's happening now. I'm all about the umbrella, you guys. This was not a challenge in the least bit, because I love umbrellas so much. So how can we work with an umbrella? I feel like we've got the perfect scenario here for an umbrella. So if I could have you just cover that up, we're just going to not see that tub anymore that's in the background. <laughs> this is great, right? And I'm going to photograph you like this. And if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to have you keep sitting. Just take a little scoot forward toward me. And with your other hand, just start to like waft the smoke around. Yeah. So this isn't, the smoke is sort of dying off now, but you can keep going with it. And this is just one example. Now, we're not judging me based on this photo because there are a lot of things going wrong. But this is just one example of how I would incorporate a prop such as this into the photo shoot to make it a little bit more dynamic, to make it maybe have a different statement to it. So what you're imagining, not what you're seeing, what you're imagining is lots of fog all around with her sitting in the fog with an umbrella. You're imagining it? You got it? OK, good. I'm glad. Thank you so much for your work. Let's give her a round of applause, please, because she did a lot of work in like five, 10 minutes here. And what I'm going to do is go over to my computer, and we're going to edit one of these images. Now, specifically, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Um, specifically, what we're going to do here is take one of those pictures from start to finish. And I think that we should probably do the fabric image, because that's going to actually show the most amount of editing skills in a short period of time. So I think that's what we're going to go with to start. And I'm just going to grab the images from behind the stage, and then we're going to pop them on and take a look together. So I'm going to grab those pictures now. Ooh, thank you. No problem. <laughs> Are you guys having
having a very joyous morning, because I am. I feel really happy right now. So let's just let's pop in here and see if we can find what we're looking for. OK. This is where we started today, just with our test shot. And then we went to this image, which is going to be our main shot for the image that we're going to edit. And then we've got our fabric. And these were really good, so we're going to use that. OK. So let's go ahead and just make our selections. I think we're going to go with these images. And I'll open them straight into Photoshop. OK, let's play. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, the first thing that I do to an image is to expand my frame outward. So I'm on my crop tool here. And I'm just going to pull the image out. Now, what do you notice is that there's white popping into the background, right? And we want a dark black backdrop. So instead, I'm just going to switch my colors down here in that little toolbar so that black is on bottom. So then that's the color that will fill into my background, just so that we have less to do later on. So I'm just expanding my frame. I've just clicked onto my brush tool. I'm alt clicking to sample a color from the background. And I'm going to go ahead and start painting black. This is super professional, right? Yeah, just say that it is. It's fine. This is what I do for a lot of my images. I just paint a color into the background, whatever I want. Because you can, because there are no rules. And I'm quite sick of people saying that there are all these rules that you have to follow. There are not. Do what you want, as long as it looks really realistic, as long as you can do what you need to do with printing and so on. And we'll start erasing. So an important thing to note is that I wasn't always a Sony user. Um, I switched over last summer, partially because I have a joint problem and I can't hold heavy things. So I switched to a smaller camera. But the other reason being that I really need a high dynamic range in my camera. Because as you can see, I'm working with very underexposed images. So I often need to be able to pull the highlights and the shadows out from the depths to be able to create the effect that I want in an image. And the Sony cameras are allowing me to do that in a way that I was not allowed before. Now, fine art is my business. So does anybody do this as a business? You sell your images, and that's how you make your money? OK, so I make my money through galleries, for example. I sell my images in galleries. So if I can sell my images at larger sizes, then they're also selling at higher prices. And so this has been really good for me to be able to print even larger and have a totally new clientele in my business of people who will buy really large prints. So I'm just filling in the background here. I'm just making this a little bit softer. OK, so we're zooming out. Oh, up, up, up. OK, there we go. So we just have a little bit now where she's standing on the floor. And I'll fix that up. In fact, I'll just get rid of a lot of that right now, make that a little bit darker. And what I want to focus on is that fabric. Now, if I zoom out, you see that we have kind of a tiny frame, like not a lot of space up here to send the fabric. So let's expand upward one more time. There we go. And now I usually create squares. In fact, I exclusively create squares. So I'm just holding Shift, clicking and dragging. We almost had a perfect square. That was a miracle. And now I've got my square. But I actually think that I want her to be in the third of the frame just for a better composition. So I'm going to crop and then just go ahead and move my subject to where I want her, just like that. Now let's go grab the fabric, OK? So we've got some fabric here and some fabric here. And let's start with this one. I thought I liked the other one better. Now I'm just not so sure. And I'm just making a huge selection around our fabric and then putting it in by pasting, copying and pasting. And I'm going to put this on her head. Now what you're going to notice is that she was in a slightly different position. Her head was back. and this one, her head is forward. That's OK, because from the neck up, you don't know what her head is doing. So we don't really have an issue here in terms of things not matching. What we do have an issue with is, can you see her skin tone? How it's like really, really red here and really yellow here. So we're going to have to fix that. 
And I'm going to do that by clicking on my layer. I'm going to create a curve adjustment layer. And what I'm doing is I'm pinning that curve down to the layer below. Oh, ah. I mucked it up. One sec. There we go. OK. So I'm just pinning that curve down to the layer below it so that when I go into the red curve, I can get rid of red, and it only affects the layer that it's pinned to. Just like that. And that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about the shoulder because I am going to erase that in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and match this up wherever I think it needs to go, just like that. I'm going to create a layer mask on my layer. And I'm going in with a brush to erase. Let me just see. My hardness is down. That's good. My opacity needs to come up. I'm going to switch to black so that we can erase. And as fast as I can, because we are on a time crunch here, I'm going to erase. So let me just get in there and erase out what we don't need. OK. Now, around back, we have this issue here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Wherever we see that weird screen in the back, we definitely don't want that. OK. This is looking all right to me. I think it looks pretty interesting. So we're going to zoom out, take a fresh look. I think maybe we've got just a little, little too much weird neck in there. OK, there we go. That looks way better, doesn't it? Now, let's see if we can't add just a little bit more fabric, maybe from this piece. And I'm copying, and I'm pasting. Now, let's have some fun with this fabric, OK? So oh, I've accidentally pinned that down. Let me just correct that really fast so we can move on. All right, so now what I want to do is play with this fabric going in a different direction, maybe, looking bigger, more billowy. So let's just zoom in. And I'm going into Edit, Transform, Warp. And let's just warp this fabric a little bit so that it has a really cool shape to it, just like that, so that it lines up so then there's a good flow. And now we're going to, just as fast, layer mask that out, all the stuff that we don't want. OK. Looking good. Now I'm going to go as fast as I can. No pressure, right? <laughs> OK. Now, for me, compositing and editing usually takes about two to three hours on the average image. But a lot of that is not the compositing detail. So let me, I think it's really important to say, because compositing is very daunting for a lot of people. It's a little bit intimidating. Uh, but it doesn't really have to be. And that's really exciting. So I'm just erasing this out. I kind of erased a little bit too much. So we'll just start this process of bringing back and erasing, bringing back and erasing wherever we feel it's appropriate. So we've got some pretty interesting billowing fabric here. I think it's good to start working with. If we zoom out, we can see what we've got going on. Now, we had stage lights here, right? We've got like all this weird color on our subject. So let's fix that. And I'm just going to desaturate just that bottom layer so that we're not affecting the red but just her skin tone is a little bit more normal. I think that looks pretty good. OK. And let's see, to do something else, this is just a matter of playing, you guys. And this is my fun time, my happy fun time. So I'm going to click on my lasso tool. And I'm just going to select her dress. Now, this is something that would normally take me quite some time to do it well. And I'm just showing this as a quick example of what can be done right now to change this image. But I'm going to select her dress so that I can change the color of it. Have any of you guys used replace color? Any replace color users? It's really, really fun. And it replaces colors, literally. So if you have a color that you don't want in your image, you can go to replace color. And that will literally replace the color. But the issue is that it doesn't work on pale colors. So if you've got this really pale blue, it's simply not going to work. It's just not going to allow that color to change. So we have to do it the hard way. Wah. We're doing it the hard way. It's much harder, but it's really effective in the end. So what I'm going to do is select the dress. And again, it's not going to be perfect. I've got fingers in there and what have you. 
I'm going to feather that, maybe about 10 pixels. Now let's take a look at how much we can change the color of this dress. So I'm going into my curves layer, just affecting that bottom background layer. And I'm going to go into my blue curve. And maybe we'll add blue to the dress. And maybe cyan as well, if we want to create a cyan dress here. Now, if that's the kind of thing that we don't want to do, if it's the color that maybe we don't like, we can take this in any direction. Just by going to green, we could make it a purple dress, for example. Uh, let's see, we could get rid of that cyan, and we could try to make this a red dress. Wah, not like that. <laughs> And it takes a lot of finessing. So what color are you guys thinking is best? What? 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 Red. No, not red. You're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I just, red is going to take too long. So let's do something that's not red. Are we excited? OK, I'm going to go with a, we're going to go with blurple. That's a new word. That means blue purple. And we're going to make a compromise. I think we can get there to a good compromise. Well, this is very close to how we started, isn't it? But I liked how we started. We're going to go with that. Just for the sake of a demonstration, we'll go ahead and keep that bluish color. But you know what we can do is, just for the sake of time, I'm going to combine these layers together. And that's just the fabric that I combined. And now we can go into Replace Color, Image Adjustments, Replace Color. And what I can do here is select that red color and start to change that color. So we could actually make this match the dress instead of vice versa. There are lots and lots of areas that we could settle here. Something like that, maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like it contrasting or the same? You like the red? OK. Well, then let's just cancel that, shall we? But it's really fun to play with. OK, so just a couple final things before I have to wrap this up. Let's see. If I'm just going to zoom in, go back here, and I'm going to play with light. So let me just draw some light in here so that we have some believable light shining in the corner of our image. I'm going to feather that a good 300 pixels. And I create my curve adjustment layer. And let's see what it looks like if we just add some light coming in. Now you can start to see the background, OK? And that's not good. So instead of going from the shadows, let's add some light from here. We'll just really make this more dynamic. X out of that. Let's see, reset our view. OK, so let's zoom back out. We've got some better light coming in. I think it looks nice. It was just a little pop there to give her some more dynamic light. Let's go in for our first overall adjustment here, our overall curves adjustment. Now, I'm going to do something that's going to seem weird. I'm just lightening up all the shadows. But then I'm going to really darken them down in the midtones as well. OK, so we're going to try to find a happy medium there. And I think we will. I'm just adding contrast into this image. OK, how's that looking up there? Pretty decent. OK, now I'm going to do one more curve adjustment. And this time, I'm going to focus on overall color. I love to add blue into the shadows of my images and yellow into the highlights. So this is the first step that I would probably start to take in that direction to start to color the image. We can add some red in if we want to make this a bit softer of an image, just trying to soften it up. These screens are not quite what I'm seeing, so I'm just going to darken this down again so that we're all seeing the same thing here. Add some more contrast. And there are so many different ways that we can go about this image. So I'm going to end that there. Now, I would keep going, of course. I would really play with the colors, really play with the lighting, really play with all of that. But for the sake of time, we're going to leave it there. And I hope that if nothing else, you're inspired to go create something, no matter what your budget is, no matter what your experience is. I'm using the simplest tools possible. I'm using like three different tools in Photoshop, and that's not an exaggeration. So I hope that you go out and make something amazing and fun and unique. And thank you so much for listening. I'm going to come down and talk to you guys in just a second. Thank you so much.